My heart has followed all my days Something I cannot name And if this leads me to lonely roads Who is there to blame? Lonely, lonely Who knows what lonely figure the best place to review a movie like this is in a music hall, and Karazhan was once known for its amazing musicals. <laughs> yep, and to think I found this at the market. You hear that? I want from life, I want from life a strange, elusive thing. Touch a flame to make a song. Is that? Oh, hello there. I wasn't expecting visitors. Are you Eddie Bracken? Well, I was. Now I'm just another soul meant to wander around this dark and forgotten citadel. By the way, how did you know who I was? Did you happen to catch me from my earlier works? Too many girls. Happy go lucky. Rainbow Island. Actually, I know you as Mr. Duncan from Home Alone 2. Oh, I see. Well, I actually heard your voice during the movie I just saw recently, and I was hoping I could review it here. Hmm, Shinbone Alley. I remember voice acting in this. 1971, based off the Broadway musical in 1954 that I also took part in. Did you know this was all based off a comic strip series by Don Marquise? No, I didn't. Well, the comic strip was more on satire, really, but the concept was still the same. It was all about Archie and his many stories, alongside his best friend, Mehitabel. Why, did you know that Mehitabel dreamt she was Cleopatra once? Uh... Oh, and of course, Archie had that unavoidable habit of typing all of his poems in lowercase, because he couldn't hold down the shift key. Had to hop on the typewriter, but couldn't capitalize. Though I wonder if he ever found the shift lock. You know, Eddie, I was going to review the movie adaptation to this whole thing. Maybe you want to join me? I'd love to. Um, it's Isaac. Isaac the Media Hunter. Ah, I see. Well, no time to lose. Let's see. Um, how did the movie go again? Well, wait, don't tell me. Okay, a little bit, but not too much. I kind of want to figure this out on my own. Tell you what, I'll just make this a short review and try to get your memories back. That would be swell. If there's anything I remember is that this was one story worth looking into. It wouldn't feel right to spoil every single detail. Fair enough. The story centers around a cockroach named Archie and his feline friend Mehitabel, who together share with us the kind of things that can happen to them while in a 1970s setting. Archie is the kind of character who loves to express his thoughts and experiences through poems and also has a strict but caring nature towards his friends, especially Mehitabel. Now Mehitabel, who's voiced by Carol Channing, who like Eddie also played her character in the live action musical, is portrayed as a wild and sassy cat who loves doing what she wants and doesn't like to be ordered around. Despite often being scolded by Archie to change her ways, she would act on her own and yet still appreciates the kind of caring thoughts that only Archie can bring. Ah yes, but now, I believe there were two other named characters that were vital to the story? Yes there were, the first being Big Bill. He's the tough guy alley cat played by Alan Reed. You might know as Fred Flintstone. Fred Flintstone, huh? Yes, it was quite an experience working with such a legendary man. Anyway, Bill is essentially the big tough guy that will hit on any girl willing to hit on him back, and only cares about making love rather than invest in it. This is especially true as during the film, he would take her in and ended up dumping her not once, but twice. All enough to make Archie angry in so many ways. Listen, insect, don't call me father. I'm a lover, see? From father, I don't know nothing. Then there's Tyrone T. Tattersall, a Shakespearean stage cat appropriately voiced by John Carradine, who was also into Shakespeare. He desires to keep the spirit of Shakespeare's work alive the way it was meant to be shown, which of course conflicts with how others like Mahitabel see his work. Essentially, Tyrone is an example of someone who feels art should be represented as it is, unchanged and follows up to its original standards. 
However, as Mahitaba would show him, art can be interpreted in many ways and that standards don't have to be completely applied as long as it's enjoyable. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, and I'll no longer be a capulet. Thou art thyself so not a Montague. What's a Montague? What's a Montague? To yonder window plate, it is the biggest. And Juliet is the sun. It's almost like with that Archie fellow who does poems, I believe. Yes, he does. See, prior to being a cockroach, he was a human who felt pressured when doing his work. As a cockroach, he's free to do whatever he wants with his work, as long as he's given the freedom to express it. In the real world, people wish to express themselves, but can't due to budgets or people telling them what to do. So in a way, it's like he found that one thing that lets him do what he loves without anything holding him back. Leave a paper in the typewriter every night And I will write your stories for you I don't want any credit or any salary All I ask is the right to create my immortal poetry Though if I recall, he still answers up to his boss he does, and what's interesting are the things he writes to him about. During the movie, there are moments where Archie takes the time to tell us about something that recently happened, like the moth to the flame and why he constantly goes towards the light. Have you ever seen the secret heart of a flame? How many creatures have ever seen the secret heart of a flame? What makes it more neat is the use of visual art along with the song lyrics that bring about this otherwise sad tale of why we do the things we do, including the moth. The one scene in the movie where this is really used well is when Archie got so mad he decided to start a revolution against the humans, which, while a satire to how the racial demographic at the time were oppressed much like his kind, you gotta love the art style they use here. Set my blood to boiling and I thought of all the massacre and slaughter of persecuted insects at the hands of cruel humans. And I cried aloud to heaven and I knelt on all six legs and vowed a vow of vengeance. I shall organize the insects, I shall drill them, I shall lead them, I shall fling a billion times a billion risen insects in an army at the throat of all you humans, unless you sign the papers! You know, it's almost like a war PSA, and a really good one at that. Boy, the time I spent screaming during that one. And of course, there are plenty of scenes where the animation takes hold alongside the music. But even then, there are scenes where you don't need music to show some crazy stuff. For instance, when Archie gets drunk and runs into some ladybugs. Well, just look. Oh, fading, we're three ladybugs, two ladybugs, exactly fading. We're three fancy dogs, two spin and ten bugs. We're three ladybugs, exactly fading. We're three fancy dogs, two spin and ten Even I don't know what just happened, but it was trippy. Yeah, there are scenes that are either meant to connect the story or just break off to talk about something else. The whole plot, though, while meant to be like a pursuit of happiness where they discover what they desire most in life, it's often filled with either unfavorable outcomes or distractions. Like many times, you'll find some of the humor to be more in line with what you might see in a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Plus, I still can't get how Archie can go from being mad at Mahitabel to taking it out on the humans because of all the bad things they've done, even though little conflict about the humans was ever brought up, aside from the beginning. The human race may be doing the best it can, But that's an explanation, not an excuse. Ultimately though, despite any flaws it has, this is a movie that's really meant to be seen for its art and music. As a story on two friends looking to make each other happy, it's not the very best story in the world, and the characters themselves aren't that great either, but the point to a musical is to entertain, and with it being animated, it allows the viewer to witness visual interpretations that you wouldn't normally see in live action. Whether you're a fan of animation or musicals, this is a film I'd recommend seeing at least once. 
Now, I have said something like that in other fall reviews, but in this case, I felt that it's really worth seeing for yourself rather than spoiling everything that goes on. That's how interesting it was to me, so I really hope this gets you to looking at it. What's going on? Look! Up there! Hey! It's Shinbone Alley, being played by Ghostly Apparitions! Well, Isaac, it looks like it's my time to say goodbye. Time for me to move on. Move on? But you said you were stuck here! I was! But it seems you've eased my soul by bringing to light a piece of work that I myself brought to light for another. I appreciate you trying to share your thoughts on this, and I can move on knowing that my work and Don's original piece can be thought of every now and then. With that, I feel at peace. Farewell, my friend, and remember, no matter how you go about your life, always have fun with expressing what you make. Well, Loki, want to watch the rest of this ghostly musical with me? Insect, you never live a life of ease. 